How far will Johnny Storm and Ben Grimm be willing to go to get their powers back and get back home? Well, let's hop into Marvel 2 and 1 issue number 10 and find out for ourselves, shall we? Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, our heroes are still being hunted by the Spider, the evil alternate reality post-apocalyptic version of Spider-Man, who is basically the master blaster of this barter town. Up until now, the Spider actually had the upper hand, but what he wasn't expecting, though, is the return of the Thing in the Human Torch. Yes, that's right, they got their power back again. How did that happen? Well, neither are actually 100% sure. You'll recall at the end of the previous issue, they ran into a version of Sue Richards. Was she the Sue Richards of this world? Was she their Sue Richards? Coming to her friends in their time of need, we don't really know, and it's not really important for this story. All you need to know is they got their powers, and it is most definitely clobberin' time. The spider, though, is just the tip of the iceberg. The real problem is the mad thinker and his bootleg knockoff version of the Fantastic Four. They still have the town that was harboring Johnny and Ben hostage. Luckily, in the last issue, the Thing and the Human Torch were able to def beat thinkers bargain base men henchmen without their powers and here they embarrass them even further with their powers. Johnny by far steals the show in his battle with good fire. Oh what's that you can light your whole body on fire too? Well guess what I can do more than just flame on I can literally steal thermal energy from all around me. Which essentially means he could snuff out this guy like a candle. The thing is of course super strong more than able to overpower their muscle and their invisible woman stand in he just quits. Yeah the real threat, as always, was Mad Thinker himself, and is especially his madder dream of trying to replace Reed Richards in the multiverse. It's Johnny who chases him down in the desert, destroys his devices that allow him to stretch like Reed. And yet, in a moment of true character growth and mercy, he actually stays his hand from the Thinker. He says that while no one could ever hope to replace Reed Richards, if the Thinker is serious about trying to make his life matter and trying to do good, then this messed up post-apocalyptic world could most definitely use his help. He also says that he's going to be leaving him now, which I mean should really be punishment enough. And yeah, with that, the Human Torch and the Thing are heroes in the small town. They say their fond farewells to the people who had helped them during this tenuous time. This world's Amadeus show tries to offer up a little techno jargon about how they possibly could have met Sue. Maybe their message that was supposed to reverberate throughout the multiverse reverberated through time and they met a future version they weren't supposed to meet yet. But ultimately, none of that really matters because all of this is really about the relationship between Ben and Johnny, how they've grown, changed, and found a new appreciation for each other, hugging as brothers, before eventually deciding to return home as the comic ends. So that was Marvel 2-in-1 issue number 10, everybody, and overall, were this to be the end of 2-in-1, I think it would have been a very satisfying ending that brings the whole story full circle, but it's not the end, in fact, it's only the beginning. The first family are officially back in the main Fantastic Four book under Dan Slott, I think issue 2 really heats that series up, and this book isn't going away anywhere either. And under Zdarsky, this book is going to continue to shine a light on the very interesting and compelling interpersonal relationships of the Fantastic Four, with Reed and Ben being up next. And honestly, this series has just been so damn good and surprising, I'm happy it gets to continue from here, especially because there's still a lot of hanging plot threads. What happened to Dr. Rachna? Ultimately, as far as this conclusion goes, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel again. I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not take a look at some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in the market for some cheap comic books, might I recommend Book Depositor? They're my favorite place to get cheap comic book trades, and if you use my link down in the description, not only will you save a bundle by not having to pay a cent for shipping, but everything you do buy goes to support me in the channel. So you win, I win, everybody wins, right? And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Joel, and I'm going to continue making comic book videos that smack of greatness. Bye bye